eat your veggies. No, you eat your veggies. You gotta have your veggies. They taste gross, I don't want them. But you gotta have the nutrients. Don't tell me what to do. Eat your asparagus. No, they make my bees stink. Eat your broccoli. Can I smother it with cheddar? No, that's not healthy. You eat your veggies. Chick, eat your veggies. Chick, you eat your veggies. We've all been told to eat our veggies for their many nutrients, but unless you're smothering them with sauces or salad dressing, they just don't taste good. Yeah, let's be honest here. There's a reason you never wanted to eat your peas when you were little. Luckily, in this video, we're gonna go over some nutrient-dense foods that don't require eating any vegetables, but still allow you to get all your nutrients. Before we get started, welcome back to our channel, folks. We're the Carnivore Chicks, and I'm Allie. And I'm Patricia. We're coaches that talk everything from health, fitness, to nutrition. Before we get into all these nutrient-dense foods, let's talk about what that means and why we should eat them. But don't worry, stick around to the end, and we'll go over the best foods for nutrients. So what does nutrient dense mean? Simply put, it's foods high in nutrients relative to their calories. So before we dive into those foods, let's give an example of what is not nutrient dense. Now, some of the most obvious ones are cereals. You've probably heard this before, that cereals are a good source of fiber and important for a heart healthy diet. However, none of them have nutrients and all of them are high in calories. This goes for the ones that say lower your cholesterol, which Speaking of, stay tuned for tomorrow's video where we'll talk about the importance of cholesterol. Cereals are not nutrient dense, and even if they say they're a good source of fiber or they're heart healthy. All cereals are full of a lot of processed ingredients and sugars. Also, they include a lot of grains, which are low nutrients and high in calories, even whole grains. Now, some foods have a lot of nutrients and are nutrient dense, but they're not necessarily the best way to get them. This goes for vegetables, Pretty much all of them. Now I can already see in the comments of people talking about the benefits of certain vegetables. We're not knocking off all vegetables because vegetables can have their place whether it's for healing or food or really just whatever you want. But they just wouldn't be the best sources for your nutrients. Now here's why. If we're eating a nutrient dense diet then we also need to make sure that our bodies can absorb those nutrients. And some foods have a lot of nutrients but our bodies just don't efficiently absorb them. To have nutrients our bodies can absorb, then they need to be eaten in a bioavailable bio form. So what does bioavailability mean? Bioavailable foods are just foods that are rich in minerals that our body can absorb. This means if we're eating a food for its nutrients, our body will be like, oh yeah, and absorb those nutrients right on up. So what makes vegetables so bad? Well, basically they just contain anti-nutrients that prevent their absorption and their nutrients don't come in the most optimal form. But check out this video somewhere up here or in the description box below to learn more about that. Now, we have a solid idea on what nutrient-dense foods are and what bioavailable foods are. What are some of those foods? First one, salmon. All right, you might not like salmon, but seriously, you might want to reconsider and get some in your diet. And if you don't like salmon, you have to wait to hear the last one because that one's not as common to eat in the United States, but seriously, like a superfood and probably the best superfood that's out there. So why is salmon such a nutrient-dense food and bioavailable? It's rich in vitamins and minerals that assist in weight loss, skin health, and it actually also treats anxiety and depression. This is because it's rich in B-complex vitamins, D vitamins, contains selenium, potassium, and most importantly, iodine. Now, there are a lot of diseases out there and people say that smoking kills, but it cures salmon. Anyways, speaking of smoked salmon, get some in your diet. One of the more well-known features of salmon is that it contains a hefty amount of omega-3s. Omega-3s are important because they are anti-inflammatory, which is contrary to omega-6s that are pro-inflammatory. Omega-6s are found in seeds, nuts, vegetable oils, avocado oils, peanut butter, etc. Now, being deficient in omega-3 can, can look like dementia, arthritis, allergies, depression, cancer, and asthma. Now, this isn't to say that omega-3 de deficiency can cause these things, but they can be present alongside them. All right, all right. The next one you're going to love. I like it. She likes it. Dare I say I love it. 
That reminds me, if you guys like this video, please don't forget to hit that like button because it helps with the YouTube algorithm and helps more people view this video. Okay, so what's the next one? Bacon! <laughs> you heard that correctly. It's bacon. Wait, you mean this whole time I was having my spinach salad, I could have been eating a plate of bacon? Yeah. But let's break this down a little bit. We're not necessarily just talking any old bacon. We're talking about pork belly in general. And if you don't know what pork belly is, bacon is made from it. And you could make your own if you wanted bacon without all of those processed ingredients in them. So what's the deal with bacon? Why is it so nutrient dense? Pork is crazy rich in thiamine and riboflavin. It also contains magnesium, phosphorus, vitamin B6, niacin, vitamin B12, vitamin A, magnesium, zinc, copper, pantothenic acid, and honestly, the list just keeps going. If you're not eating bacon or you've gone the turkey bacon route, you're just plain missing out on all that flavor and its minerals. One of the main reasons everyone should be eating pork is because of thiamine. Thiamine is also known as vitamin B1, and just like salmon, it can also treat anxiety and depression. It helps with our nervous system, heart health, intestinal health, stomach health, and brain health. It also contains a lot of riboflavin. Riboflavin is needed for iron absorption. This is why some folks are anemic and are actually deficient in riboflavin, not iron. Riboflavin absorbs iron. Hey, hey, hey. let's tell them this next one. It's like, it's like my favorite one. Okay. <laughs> Steaks. Steaks is the next one, and more importantly, ribeye. Eat more steaks, especially more ribeye. Now this might sound a little bit weird because it's red meat, but let's talk about all the nutrients in ribeyes. Now this doesn't mean that this is the same for all steaks. Ribeyes are high in niacin, B-complex vitamins, zinc, phosphorus, selenium, and just the list goes on. They're also high in fat that can help facilitate the digestion of meat. What are you doing? Oh, I'm eating my veggies. That's ground beef. Oh yeah, I'm a vegetarian. But that's ground beef. Right, I'm a second-hand vegetarian. What's that? The animals I eat, eat my veggies for me. Okay now, let's get into this next one. It's a good one. Look, before we tell you, just let us explain before you go, ew, and you just shut off this video. It's liver. Beef liver, chicken liver, any liver. All right, all right, all right. You might be thinking, ew. <laughs> but let us explain, and also let us know in the comments if you eat it. We didn't grow up with it, but some folks did, and honestly, it can be a staple in their diets. Beef liver is high in vitamin A, copper, folate, vitamin B12, phosphorus, selenium, potassium, and the list goes on. In fact, in wolf packs, after a successful hunt, the liver is saved for the leader of the pack because of how nutritious it is. Look, liver is an acquired taste, and I hated it when I first tried it. I legit, like, gagged. <laughs> but, honestly, we found a great recipe for it that masks the flavor of it. We'll put that link in the description box below. Uh, or somewhere up here if we can figure out how to do that. Now, if you haven't noticed, all these foods come from animals, and that's because animal foods are nutrient dense and bioavailable. It's easier to absorb the nutrients from the animals than it actually is to absorb the plant nutrients because the plant nutrients need to be converted into the same form that animals already come in just so our body can absorb it. All right, guys, that's it for today. We hope you liked this video. If you did like it, please hit that like button and please subscribe to our channel where you can get more content like this every day. And we'll see you next time. Keep it rebellious, folks.